Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's see the solutions to the model question paper of the subject VLSI Design and Testing with the code 21EC63. The first question is, with necessary circuit diagram, explain the operation of tri-state inverter and realize 2 is to 1 mux using tri-state inverter. Here the tri-state inverter is that it is a normal inverter with a control signal. When this control signal is 0, the inverter output will be tri-stated to Z. When the control signal is 1, this will be operated as a normal inverter. You can see the truth table. When enable is equal to 0, irrespective of the input, output will be Z. And when enable is equal to 1, when input is 0, output will be inverted to 1. And input is 1, in output will be inverted to 0. You can see the first circuit here. This will be having four transistors, two P transistors and two N transistor network connected in series. It It is a tri-state inverter now. So enable and enable bar will be given to one N transistor and one P transistor. When this enable becomes one, you can see when enable is equal to one here, the two transistors will be on both N transistor and P transistor in between R1. And this will be act as a normal inverter. When A is one, A bar, will be generated as output as 0. So when enable is equal to 0, what is the case? The in between two transistors will be off, means output will not be connected to VDD as well as it is not connected to ground also. That's why there is no direct connection for the output terminal. So we say the output will be tri-stated to Z. There is no path to discharge as well as there is no path to charge. That's why the output will be tri-stated to Z. Now let us come to the second part of the question that is we need to realize 2 is to 1 mux using tri-state inverter. The 2 is to 1 mux says there will be a single select line and two inputs we are taking it as AB and select line is S. When S is equal to 0, A should be selected as output. When S is equal to 1, B will be our output. That's why Y is equal to A into S bar plus B into S is the expression for this 2 is to 1 mux. So it requires two tri-state inverters here and uh, the control signal here in place of enable we are using yes. How we are supposed to provide the inputs in the sense? Since A, B are the inputs here and these are the inverters, we are providing A bar and B bar so that we will be getting A over here or, and B over here. And the control signals are given such a way that when S bar is 1, A has to be the output. That's why S bar will be given to the N transistor. It means here S bar in the sense it is 0. When 0 is my S is equal to 0, A will be the output. That means S bar is equal to 1, A will be the output. Similarly here, when S is equal to 1, B will be the output. So this is the arrangement giving the 2 is to 1 mux functionality. This gives A into S bar plus B into S functionality at the output. Then the second question is, realize CMOS gate for the following function y is equal to a into b plus c plus d whole bar. So the related uh, video is available in the playlist of VLSI design in my channel. You can see that some complex expression are taken and uh, how to write the circuit using CMOS logic is explained. So coming to the question here a into b plus c plus d is given. So b plus c we need to realize first. So b plus c in the pull down network will be in parallel since it is b plus c and it will be in series with a, a into b plus c that's why a will be in series with b and c and for this network a into b plus c we will be having plus de means parallelly we need to connect two series transistors with the gate input de. So this pull down network you need to write first and by looking at the pull down network you need to write the pull up network by converting the series connections into parallel and parallel connections into series. Then we are going to get the output y as a into b plus c plus d. If you have any doubt in making the connections, you visit this video. The, uh, the video will be having many complex circuits uh, designed. You will come to know how actually the logic will be. Then the next question is implement a D flip flop using transmission gate and explain its operation with necessary timing diagram. Here is the detailed explanation given. So the D flip-flop circuit is this. You can see there are four transmission gates are required. 
so the first half of the circuit uh, here given as blue color will be act as the negative level switch or the latch and the second half means the orange colors uh, circuit indicating the positive level latch so these two latches combiningly making the circuit of d flip flop when clock is equal to low you can see here t1 t4 is on it means this t1 and t4 transmission gates are on what happens when uh, the clock is low here this transmission gate will be on the d will be passed to the inverter d will be inverted again we will be having one more inverter this will be uh, again making d as a normal true value and here this transmission gate is off so that it will be in this stage when the next positive edge comes what happens so next positive edge means clock become high clock is low here we are giving the d and when clock becomes high in the next subsequent time what happens t2 t3 will be on t2 is this and t3 is this the value of d will be present over here now this trans this transmission gate is off so that we are not taking the value of d the previous value what we have taken over here will be processed and since this t2 transmission gate is on it will move to the next stage the next stage transmission gate t3 is also on so that we can invert it and send to the output q so this is how we are going to get the same value of d in q you can see the path over here 4 1 2 5 6 and then it will reach q you can read this you will come to know the detailed explanation this much of answer is uh, required for the seven marks then comes the second question that is uh, in module one the choice question here they have asked cmos inverter circuit diagram and with the help of its transfer characteristics we need to explain the different regions of operation and derive the v out equation for region c so for this first you need to write the circuit diagram of cmos inverter this requires one p transistor and one n transistor and you need to mention clearly the uh, drain source as well as gate this is what the circuit is and you need to write the transfer characteristics v out in y axis and v in in x axis when v in is zero the maximum output we are going to get from the inverter that's why v out is maximum maximum output in the sense it is vdd why because when v in is equal to zero transistor p is on and vdd will be the output that's why the maximum output vdd we are going to get as we start applying v in v in will be increased what happens the output will be keep on decreasing why because when v in the input reaches the threshold voltage of the n transistor initially n transistor will be off now it will be started to turn on when it started to turn on there is a discharge happens through this path from the output terminal that's why the output will be keep on reducing and finally it will become zero when the input reaches the maximum value vdd so that's why it is a smooth curve like this and we can divide that as region a b c d and e and these regions are divided in such a way that here up to this stage n transistor will be off from this stage onwards n transistor will be on and then at region c both the transistor will be in the saturation region means exactly at the half of the input given and later on again vdd minus vtp is the threshold point of the p transistor from here onwards p transistor will be off so the five regions indicating the different levels of the transistors p as well as n you can see the conditions over here and also the p transistor and the n transistor regions of operation so depending on this we need to explain how actually the transistors will behave and the output will be generated in and uh, the curve will be in each and every uh, regions you can see the video which is available in detail i have explained the cmos inverter and its characteristics it is there in vls citizen playlist and coming to the second part of the question that is derive the v out equation in region c it is very easy at region c both the transistors will be in saturation it means both transistors are on both transistors are on in the sense current will be equal and we say v in will be at the half of the maximum voltage and also v out will be at the mag half of the voltage vdd by 2 is the output and the derivation is given over here you can see vdsp sorry idsp is uh, 
minus IDSN. Why? Because drain to source current we are going to take in in terms of drain to source if we take this is the current direction means VDD to V out the current will flow in P transistor it is shown as reversed that's why we need to take it as minus but N transistor flow will be V out to VSS so it is taken as minus and this is the expression for uh, current in the uh, P transistor when it is in saturation region this is the expression for the N transistor current in saturation region and if you take these two and equate uh, any of these two are equal with uh, negative sign we will be getting the expression for V in this V in will be having beta n beta p uh, values if you consider beta n beta p are same and also the threshold voltage of the two transistors magnitudes are same then we will come to know that V in will be equal to 0.5 into VDD means that is exactly half of the VDD and and at that stage you can see this implies the change over between the logic levels is symmetrically deposed about at the point which where VDD or uh, half of the VDD will be V out. So we need to take V in and V out as half of the VDD that is exactly the point uh, where we consider it as region 3. This is how you can derive or you can directly write also. Then comes the second question in the choice that is derive the equation for drain current of a MOSFET in non-saturated and saturated regions of operation. This is a very important question repeatedly asked and also the MOSFET operation can be asked. So to derive the expression for MOSFET we need to take the charge into consideration and also the time with respect to the charge flow. So here the drain to source current will be equal to charge induced in the channel this is the channel between source and the drain end and divided by uh, charge in the channel divided by electron transit time. So here the electron transit time will be calculated first it will be equal to length by velocity. The transit time T is equal to length by uh, velocity V. So here velocity will be taken as mu into EDS that is electric field into uh, electron mobility. Here since it is a N transistor we need to take it as mobility of electrons and here EDS electric field will be equal to the voltage across the channel that is from drain to source that is VDS divided by length of the channel that is L. So if we substitute EDS over here the velocity will be equal to mu into VDS divided by L and then substituting this in the expression of uh, TSD that is transit time it will be L square divided by mu into VDS. Now we got the denominator in my current expression. Now we need to calculate QC. What is QC here? QC is the charge induced in the channel. So QC will be equal to if you take the charge per unit area, unit area in the sense uh, 1 by 1. It is EG into epsilon INS epsilon naught. Here EG is the average electric field in that area uh, into relative permittivity of the insulation between the gate and channel since we have a SiO2 layer over here. And epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space. Now we are calculating for the complete length of the channel. So we need to take W into L means width of the channel as well as length of the channel. That's why W into L is multiplied here. So if you take this and we need to uh, place EG over here. EG in the sense average electric field if you calculate again we, uh, voltage divided by the depth. Here the depth is taken, depth of the channel is taken. Why? Because here gate to channel we need to consider. Depth of the SiO2 layer, this is D, we need to consider while calculating the electric field between gate and channel. This is D. That's why it is D. Here uh, we have taken the electric field EDS as VDS the voltage divided by length of the channel. Here we are taken voltage between the gate and the channel with respect to drain. And D is the, uh, sorry, not drain, it is thickness, D. And now we are going to get QC is this and combining these two QC and uh, TSD that is transit time we are going to arrive with this expression and solving that expression replacing uh, this constants with K is equal to epsilon INS epsilon R naught mu divided by D and we are replacing that again with beta we will be arriving with the non saturation current equation as IDS is equal to beta into VGS minus VT into VDS minus VDS square divided by 2. This is the expression for 
non saturation region you can see here in the non saturation region the current will be dependent on vds as well as vgs now comes the saturation region when saturation region begins what we say the condition is the drain voltage drain to source voltage will be equal to vgs minus vt or greater so we need to replace this vds will be uh, replaced by vgs minus vt here also vds square will be replaced by VD, vgs minus vt then we will be getting the expression for saturation region the same expression taken as vds in place of vds we need to take vgs minus vt so we will be getting ids is equal to k into w by l vgs minus vt whole square by 2 this is the expression for saturation region current so these two they have asked to derive this is for 6 marks then comes the first uh, module last question compute the output voltage v out in a pass transistor circuit shown in the figure 1 this is the circuit they have given here the thing is that remember this for n mass pass transistor the condition is that the gate voltage should be greater than vt to turn on that is the basic criteria and then if the drain voltage is less than vgs minus vt or vg minus vt what we say the source voltage will be same as drain voltage suppose if the drain voltage is greater than vgs minus vt then we say the source voltage will be vg minus vt means the output will be degraded suppose if the 4 volt is given over here and 5 volt is given over here uh, gate voltage is more than the drain voltage even if we take the drain voltage as 4 volts and if we calculate vg minus vt vg is 5 volts and the threshold voltage of this will be some somewhere 0.7 volts if we minus 7 0.7 volts from 5 volts that is again more than 4 it is 4.3 that's why gate voltage gate to uh, gate and threshold voltage if we subtract it is 4.3 that is greater than the drain voltage that is 4 volts that's why the source voltage will be same as drain voltage we are taking it as 4 volts similarly here the other way is that simply uh, see the drain voltage and the gate voltage is more than 1 volt difference we can calculate it like that and we can say the same voltage will be passed otherwise we need to subtract these 4 volts with a threshold voltage of 0.7 and we need to take 3.3 uh, uh, as the output because of the gate voltage is more here compared to drain voltage we are taking the same value these two conditions we need to uh, remember while solving these pass transistor logics while one pass transistor is driving the other pass transistor this is about the first module questions let us solve this second module questions in the next video thank you